Hello everyone, my name is Jesus Quesadilla and welcome back to Let's Play Saints Row 4! In the previous episode we found out that Matt Miller actually didn't betray us, it was actually Keith David. And uh, today we've been transported, uh, Keith David actually did come through for us and uh, return to our side of the battle. Unfortunately he and I got caught by Zinyak, and uh, now we have to find him. Do I hear bagpipes? Oh. My. God. Oh my god, oh my god, it's Rowdy Roddy Piper! Holy shit! No way, that is fucking awesome! The Hot Rod, Rowdy Roddy Piper, holy crap! That is just... Okay, I'm sorry, if you're not a wrestling fan, you're not gonna get it, but... That's unbelievable that he's in this game, that's beautiful! That man is a living legend. I mean, one of the best promo guys ever to wrestle. I mean, just a phenomenal, phenomenally gifted person. I'm so stoked to see him in the game. I have no idea why he's in the game, but God, that's freaking awesome. You couldn't even save your own. Oh, come on, Keith David, really? You're gonna try and mix it up with the hot rod? You got no chance. No chance, that's what she got! Up against a machine too strong! Um, whoa, what the fuck? Let him go! Uh, oh, oh my god, I get to hang out with Roddy Piper. This hey, is so I'm great Roddy. to meet you. Roddy Piper. Hey, I'm the President of the United States. Sure. Why not? <laughs> oh god, that's great. Wait, so is Roddy Roddy Piper a simulation or is he trapped here too? Did he piss off Zinyak? Alrighty. I'm guessing Zinyak must have been a Hulk Hogan fan. Wait, a thought just ran through my head. What if Roddy Piper and Johnny Gat had a tag team? They would be unbeatable. This officially needs to happen. They need to be introduced to one another because they are the two biggest ass kickers ever to live. What is this place? A television broadcasting tower. What the hell's he gonna do with the broadcast tower? He's a crazy man with a microphone. What do you think he's gonna do? Okay, that can't be good. Ladies and gentlemen of America, the threat is right in front of us. And the sad thing is, he's still better than anything they played on the radio for the last ten years. Everyone you see got it all wrong, Keith. Zinyak's in your head. He's got you all confused. Keith. Oh, come on, now he's running? Seriously? Oh, crap. Oh, God, we got enemies here to deal with. I totally forgot that was even a thing. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of them. Damn, we gotta snap him out of it. It would suck if we have to get rid of Keith David, but that's starting to look like what it's coming down to. Also, jeez, these Terminator robots are insane. And they just crawl around on the floor even after you kill them. That's so annoying. But, um, actually, I was watching, uh, I think it was, like, Wife Swap or something like that. It was some kind of, like, uh, I mean, it was some kind of, like, Trading Places TV show where basically, uh, they switch people's wives around. I think it was called Wife Swap. I know there's more than one of those shows out on TV now. Um, but they did a special celebrity episode where they switched around, uh, Ric Flair's wife with, uh, Roddy Piper's wife. I guess Ric Flair's current wife. I don't know how many that guy's been through. Probably, like, a dozen at least. But, um... You know, it was really interesting because even though Roddy Piper and Ric Flair were both really famous wrestlers at one point in their lives, um... Roddy Piper and Ric Flair, they both got to tour the world. I'm sure they both made tons and tons of money doing it. And, uh, it's interesting because they turned out so damn differently. Uh, Ric Flair, it's so clear to see that the money and the fame and everything just went straight to his head. The guy really lives a sad life at this point. I mean, you could tell from the show that he just goes out, he throws his money around to try and get attention, and it's money that he doesn't even have at this point, because he doesn't actively wrestle anymore, so he can't be making that much, you know? And so it's sad to see that he's trying to keep up the same public image and everything by going out and partying, and... Uh, conversely, though, Roddy Piper just seems so much more down-to-earth after he was done wrestling. I think he really, uh... He, he got grounded back with reality, and he kind of just lives as a normal person now. At least that's the way the show depicts it. Of course, it could be completely different in real life. Uh, the way they do things on TV is always exaggerated or different from how it really is, but... Just the contrast there, Roddy Piper seemed like the kind of guy you want to hang out with. Ric Flair, maybe not so much. The guy kind of just... I don't know, it's sad to see because I used to really love both of those guys. Um... I've been a huge wrestling fan for a long time, and I know not everyone's into wrestling, but uh, whether or not you like it, you gotta at least respect what the guys do. They, they really go and put a lot of damage and wear and tear on their bodies to entertain people, and 
You know, it's sad to see someone like Ric Flair, who at one point in his life was a really great, phenomenal entertainer. Um, one of the best ever, and he's just become so broken down over time. He's still just... It's just sad, you know? These guys used to be people's heroes, and then to see one of them broken down like that, it's just so demoralizing. Um, actually, this is kind of funny, but at the same time, it is really morbid and sad. But I remember there was this thing circulating online where Ric Flair was trying to make money by um, selling different things. And so you could, like, buy a five-minute phone call with Ric Flair for, like, an absurd amount of money. I mean, it was a ridiculous price, too. I forget the amount off the top of my head. Um, if anyone was curious, I'm sure they could actually look it up. But you could, like, buy a phone call from Ric Flair or buy, like, a Skype call from him. The one that I like, though, the one that was, like, really absurd was that you could pay money to teach Ric Flair how to play the guitar. L l let me just get that straight. He's not paying you to teach him to play the guitar. You're paying him for the privilege to teach him. And you also have to, like, pay for, like, his hotel accommodations if you fly him out to see you or whatever. And it was just so... I mean, I laughed at it when I first saw it, but then it's just so miserable to see these guys turn into something like that. But, um, thankfully, Roddy Piper, at least, seems like one of the guys he... He squirreled away enough money from his wrestling days to be good for the rest of his life. But he lives very modestly, at, at least the way that the TV show depicted him. Um, he lives in this little house out in the mountains, kind of by himself. Well, well, he's with his family and everything, but I mean, they're really secluded. He's not living in the city. He's not trying to attract all this fame and attention and trying to relive his glory days. He just kind of, like, retired gracefully and, you know, lives out the rest of his time in peace. And I think that's much more respectable, so... Just another reason why Roddy Piper's a total badass. Oh god, okay. <laughs> so we're gonna to get to see a Roddy Piper Smackdown? Sounds good. Get him over the head with the coconut! Ooh, atomic drop. He's gonna be feeling that one in the morning. He's going for the backbreaker! By god, King, he snapped that man in half! He's going for the sleeper hold! Fruity, delicious, fruity, fruity, delicious, Skittles! Wait, what? Did he kill him? What the fuck? You weren't supposed to kill him. We're supposed to get information out of him. What the shit? Oh, wait, what? I think he has some unresolved issues. You don't know what happened. And he's just okay now? Gotta save Kinsey. Wish we could call Roddy for help. No one calls Roddy for help. <laughs> he shows up where he's needed most. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, man, that's just beautiful. All right, well, we got Keith David brought back to his senses. That's good. And we made a new friend in Roddy Piper. Too bad, uh, make it sound like we can't call on him for help. Oh, well. All righty, though. At least we got Keith's sanity restored. Somewhat. He's still dressed up like Lando for some reason. I wonder if that's permanent now. Oh, cool, we still get Roddy Piper. <laughs> okay, that's great. So besides what Keith said, we actually do get to call on Roddy anytime we want his help. That's cool. Um... So cool, so we could have a meetup between, uh, Roddy Piper and Johnny Gat if we really wanted to, that's pretty awesome. So, uh, we'll definitely make that happen, but for now, let's go ahead and take another mission. Um, because I do want to track down Kinsey now that we, uh, can have Keith David help us out with that. Okay, good, good, good. Punch him in, Matt. Send the data to Sid. We'll take it from there. Okay, sounds good. So we're going to get our girl back. Good to know. Let's go ahead and run on over there. And, um... Ooh, actually, we're kind of... We're not up on time yet. We still got five more minutes, but... Oh, God. We're not going to be able to do another mission in five minutes. And I don't really like ending off missions in the middle like that. Like I did at the uh, start of the episode. Because um, I just don't like the feeling of leaving something incomplete like that. Um... You know, let's go ahead and kill some of these guys. I have been neglecting to do this. And um, there's a bunch of these flashpoints all over the place, kind of like the uh, the gang takeovers and stuff from the previous game. Except that we're just killing aliens here. So uh, let me just go ahead and kill some time, getting rid of these dudes. Um, we might have to save getting Kinsey for the next episode. Because we're definitely not going to be able to do that in five minutes. Yeah, just splatter you. Get rid of this thing because it's obnoxious, because all it does is spawn a bunch of guys. Alright, there we go. 
This is now my property, and you will respect my authority. But yeah, the whole Ric Flair thing, I think, is just really terrible. It's really a tragedy that people can go from being so much in the limelight, and it all goes to their heads, and after it all stops, they just, you know, they're used to it. So they have nowhere to go but down at that point, I guess. And um, it, it's just the reality that a lot of athletes and a lot of celebrities face, is that after their time in the spot lights up, a lot of them don't know how to deal with that. And so you end up having a lot of these people who are heroes and or they're heroes to people and they just end up disappointing their fans because they kind of just crumble after the uh, all the fame and glory starts to fade away. Actually, um, Ric Flair was on the panel, I think, for the uh, press conference for the new WWE video game that's coming out in October. And um, he was just a mess. I mean, just hogging the, the mic time the entire time, rambling. He might have been inebriated. I don't know. He looked like he may have been drunk. Um, the video is actually circulating online, so if you just look up WWE 2K14 press conference with uh, Ric Flair, you'll be able to see it, and it's it's just horrible. Um, but we're here outside of Kenzie's place, and I'm going to go ahead and end off the episode here today, uh, because we don't really have enough time for another mission, so I'll just pick it up in the next one. Sorry for the short episode, guys. Hopefully you don't mind too much. Um, I'll try to make up for it next time. But until then, thank you for joining me again here today, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please feel free to subscribe to me. Once again, my name is Jesus Quesadilla, and by subscribing to me, you can stay updated anytime I post new videos to my channel. But besides that, today has been a whole lot of fun, and until the next one, this is Jesus Quesadilla signing out and wishing you well. Peace!